Life is a journey to figure out who you are and when you finally figure it out, who it is you really are. The journey's wounds can heal with acceptance to accept who it is you are. Or you can finish out the journey in a fog of addictive chemicals. One thing that helps you accept who you are is to be able to look in the mirror, you know, somewhere around 50 or older, and honestly say that you have built or created something. For example, every time that Donald Trump looks in the mirror, he sees the image of a Trump Tower. This gives him the strength to heal the wounds of all the bankruptcies and con jobs. As we keep these thoughts in our mind, it is time to acknowledge the list of left wingers whose dream it is to dethrone Donald Trump. The unprecedented details of this list is how many females have jumped into the mud wrestling event and never before has a Hindu agreed to put on the bathing suit and wallow in the mud. But believe it or not, in 2020, we will have two Hindus in the race. As a fortune teller, odd maker, I can tell you only the last three on this list have a chance in hell to go the full 15 rounds of this championship fight and attempt to steal the crown away from Donald Trump. So, without further ado, I give you the 666 Gang's pre-approved list of actors fighting for control of the left wing of this sick bird of democracy. We will start at the bottom of the list, working our way up to the favorites. At number 15, we have Elizabeth Warren. As Elizabeth looks into the presidential mirror, and she sees the Native American princess Pocahontas staring back at her, all is lost. She's just going through the motions right now. Her only way at cleaning the mud away will be seeking out the medicine man to help her exit this arrogant, peyote-induced nightmare she has put herself into. And at number 14, we have Cory Booker. When Booker looks into the presidential mirror, he will see a pretty Hollywood illusion staring back at him. And Corey may have the gorgeous actress Rosario Dawson to lean on, but that will not help him with the demons he needs to knock off his back. Corey's got some problems. To clean the mud off, he might want to go to a bathhouse, maybe... Maybe Lindsey Graham can recommend a discreet proprietor where he can go clean all that mud off. And at number 13, we have Kamala Harris. A lot of people don't know Kamala was born into a Hindu family. When Kamala looks into the presidential mirror, it will be a sore sight indeed. She will see Willie Brown looking back at her. He will be smiling and patting her on a soft little tush. He will reassure her, I got you this far, baby. Just sit back and relax. Daddy's got this. I mean, how? just how far can you go riding Willie's coattails? To clean this mud off, she might want to go to the beautiful beaches of Jamaica and find a Rastaman to help her sponge the mud off her back. At number 12, we have Julian Castro. When Castro looks into the presidential mirror, he will see the face of La Raza, the Chicano movement his mother helped create. But like number 13, 14, and 15 on this list, he will see no skyscrapers he built. He will see no bridges or electrical power plants. Not even a masonry business or a plumbing shop handed down from his old man. He's built nothing. He's created nothing. He's just like the rest of them. Quite frankly, his old man never even married his mother. What are the chances of a bastard child from San Antonio winning the crown? Well, maybe he can get one of those defrocked 
Catholic priest to wash away the layers and layers of mud he picked up at HUD, the housing and urban development. Number 11, we have Marianne Williamson. Number 11 is not the lucky number for Williamson, the non-Gentile, Bible-thumping, spiritual book writer who, when she looks into the presidential mirror, she will see 666. That is the number that has dogged her going all the way back to her days in Bel Air, Texas. Yeah, Texas. I recommend that she spend six days in Bel Air, Ohio, that place where all the factories have shut down to wash away the mud. Yeah, the dirty Ohio River should do the trick in washing away that satanic filth. Okay, so we're working our way down to number 10. Number 10 is John Delaney. When this New Jersey Mick looks into the presidential mirror, he will see his tough union-made old man Jack looking back at him. But Jack Delaney will not be able to help him wash away the capital source, dirty Wall Street money mud that covers his Irish heart. <laughs> no way. Maybe he should learn to be an electrician. A real man, a real worker to shock away the mud. At number nine, we have John Hickenlooper. When Hickenlooper, the liquor peddler, looks into the presidential mirror, he will see cannabis, weed. Yeah, Hickenlooper, Hickenlooper said letting people be free to smoke weed is a bad idea. A bad idea, huh? I can only imagine all Americans who seek freedom would like to pour Hickenlooper's Wincoop brew all over his head to wash away the hypocrite mud that contaminates his brain. Number eight, we have Amy Klobuchar. When beady-eyed Amy looks into the presidential mirror, she will see her drunk father's rage that will dog her for eternity. Like most on this list, she is a filthy lawyer who has built nothing and built us in triplicate. For every phone call she ever made to the 666 gang, there is no holy water that will clean the mud off this cryptic. Number seven, that's not the lucky number for Jay Inslee. Yes, Jay is another lawyer slash prosecutor scum that Americans have grown to hate. But that won't stop Jay from looking into the presidential mirror because he met the Dalai Lama. He's special. So when Jay sees the Boeing 737 Max in the mirror, it might give him an idea to fly over and meet the Dalai Lama one more time to wash the mud away. Well, I would recommend taking a boat, Jay. Number six, we have Beto O'Rourke. A 46-year-old punk rock shooting star, the son of a politician slash county judge, when this rich, privileged asshole looks into the presidential mirror, he will see Ted Cruz. I mean, this punk rocker could not even beat Ted Cruz, a Bible-thumping Canadian who has a Cuban father. I mean, okay, when Beto's flame dies out, Maybe one of those pretty roadie girls can help him wash away the mud. Number five, Kirsten Gillibrand, another filthy, dirty, corrupt attorney slash politician. If that's not enough to make you gag, she worked the Hillary Clinton Senate campaign. She married a British wanker, and she wants to give illegals your hard-earned Social Security money. Huh. I think we can all agree, Kirsten. Please, please, please don't look in the mirror because it will shatter and I'm not done yet. P.S. Leave the mud on you. It looks good on you. Number four, Andrew Yang. I feel a little sorry for Mr. Yang because he's on the bubble, as they say in poker slang. You see, in poker tournaments, if they pay, let's just say they pay the top three places. The fourth man out, he gets nothing. Trust me, it sucks. So when Andrew looks into the presidential mirror, he will see universal basic income. And it will give him reason to be proud. Yes, 
he fought a good fight. And I predict that no mud will stick on him because he's a good man. No mud, so there's no need to wash it away. So, here we are. Drum roll, please. Yeah, we're down to the three favorites who have a chance to snatch the crown away from Donald Trump to dethrone him. Number three, we have Tulsi Gabbard. When this war hero looks into the presidential mirror, she will see Samoa, the land her father was born in, the land that she was born in. And I'm sure she would win a landslide in any election in Samoa or Hawaii. But as they say in Hollywood, I mean, this ain't Kansas, Dorothy. So if Tulsi could learn the right narrative on universal basic income, I mean, she would move up to first or second place. I mean, she could compete with the next two boys. But I'm not sure the 666 gang will allow her to do anything more than throw the CIA under the bus. So, Tulsi will go to Waikiki to wash away the mud, and I just wish I could be there to watch. Number two, Joe Biden, assuming he finally says he's going to run. But he's my locust branch. He's the locust tree that bends but won't break. When Joe looks into the presidential mirror, he's going to see the witch Hillary Clinton. It will be scary indeed. I can only hope that Joe can shake that ugly memory of bowing down to the evil witch in 2016 and not running himself. But uh, who knows, maybe the Americans have the attention span of a goldfish, and they will forget how Joe let the witch cheat Bernie. If, uh, if Joe were to embrace universal basic income, he would crush Bernie in the primaries. But like Hillary... Joe's not too smart. He's not smart enough to embrace UBI, so maybe Joe can have his out-of-touch advisors wash away the mud. Finally, number one, old man Bernie, the guy who was cheated by the witch Hillary last time, and yet here he is, still standing, as Hillary slinks and melts into hell. When Bernie looks into the presidential mirror, he will see universal basic health care because that's all his stubborn little brain will allow him to see. Bernie might underestimate how hard it's going to be to steal the crown away from Donald Trump. It will be much easier if he embraces universal basic income first and then health care next. But like I said, Bernie, well, he's stubborn, and his worn-out ex-Hillary advisor, advisors that he just hired, they will tell him the same thing they told the witch Hillary. Bernie, the numbers just don't work on universal basic income. No, Bernie, the numbers don't work. And that's Hillary ignored it. Hillary lost, and it's possible the dinosaur Bernie will believe them, and he might miss the train. So if Bernie blows this chance, maybe he can visit Roseanne Barr over there and uh, wash away the mud in the Dead Sea. The bottom line for the left-wing progressives is this. Dethroning Donald Trump won't be easy, so let the games begin.